uh, Justin on the right hand side is repping that Sapphire Steel. We're going to start off with the Fortisphere, one cost inkable item, draw a card. And there is a second ability where you can give bodyguards to one of your characters, which can come up occasionally, but we play it because it's a card. it draws a card that's filling our deck. And this deck is going to have a lot of item synergy. What are these items going to synergize with, Ross? Oh, they're going to synergize with Tamatoa. As we see Mateo inking a Donald Duck to play a Diablo. Of course, it's largely played to shift into the free cost that draws you lots of cards, but it's got a really cheeky little ability lets you draw uh, lets you look at your opponent's hand. Yeah, information is very, very strong in the game of Lorcana to get an idea of what your opponent's curve might be. Do they have the answers for certain things? Especially in a deck like this where they want to play Diablo. Sometimes if you see answers to Diablo, you might wait a little bit. So yeah, even though we don't play the Diablo because of the one drop, it's nice to have. But we do see the ideal turn to Bucky followed by Shift Diablo by discarding Strength for a Raging Fire. What a play, Ross. Yeah, this is exactly what Mateo wanted, getting those cards out, shifting the Diablo, playing the Bucky, and we are now at the best case scenario. Justin, and it's not the end of the world yet. Nope. You just build it up, and oh, now there's another Gaston here. It's in fashion, right? That's what I mean. We saw it earlier on in the tournament. We saw it in, uh, in Joe's deck, and we had the little feature matchup, and we're seeing it again here. So that Gaston came around in the starter deck, mm -hmm. And Rise of the Floodborne. Exactly. He saw almost no competitive play in, you know, at least in the last couple of sets. And then right at the end of the Ursula's Return metagame, it's like, oh, hang on a second. Turns out Gaston's really good. Why now? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because, as you said, came out in Rise of the Floodborne, didn't see a ton of play, but I think in into the Inklands format, he was a bit more popular yes. with the Sapphire Steel decks because they started uh, incorporating that Lucky Dime, which is a seven-cost uninkable item, and you can exert and pay two to choose any of your characters and gain their lore. And because Gaston has three, that's a pretty nice jump. Plus, the dig for three to find a, pee, a key piece is super good. Yeah, and uh, sometimes I do think with cards, it's not necessarily even a metagame shift. Sometimes someone just puts it in their deck and the rest of the player base goes, yeah, you know what, that's really good. Yeah. Looks like we are firing some cannons here, though, getting rid of Diablo and playing a Porpsicle. Yeah, sorry, a little, little pull away there, just a technical thing. But we are back. We see the fire the cannons answering that Diablo blow on the board and then we're passing over to Mateo who's going to draw another copy of Ursa the Deceiver so he'll be able to snipe that hand but yeah you mentioned earlier um, just because this Bucky has come down and followed by the Diablo it's not the end of the world necessarily for Justin if he's a whole new world variant which we see he is <laughs> then he has the tools to be able to, to deal with this and one of them is going to go to the discard courtesy of the Ursa that's um, the first Ursa the Deceiver and again Mateo's holding another so he may be interested in sniping the second maybe interested maybe. <laughs> <laughs> for the second. Oh, if I'm Mateo, that's given me great information. Although, okay, I was going to say, you don't, I thought it might be inking the Ursula here, but no, we're inking a location instead, and I, I feel pretty confident. Doesn't even need to be next turn necessarily, but very soon we are going to see that whole new world going away. But first, here I'm Flavisham, who I know you are a bit partial to. Oh, a little bit. I am very fond of Basil the Great Mouse Detective, my favorite Disney film of all time. And yeah, Flavisham a great character and a great Lorcana card on play and on quest. Banish one of your uh, one of your items to draw two cards, which is really flexible. It allows the Sapphire Steel deck to go in different ways concerning its drawing. It can go via Whole New World and do the full refresh, preferably sing it with something and make these huge plays. But sometimes it's not preferable to play a Whole New World, especially if your opponent doesn't have many cards. So Flavisham is a really nice alternative option to start drawing. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Gets you lots of good draw. And of course, that gets you closer to your big end game you're looking for with my boy Tamatoa. So it does seem like we've got an Ursula here being exerted. I think that's just getting some cheeky law there from Mateo. Don't see the second Ursula yet, but I think it's telling that it's being held in hand, ready to come down when you're worried. Oh, is that another? Is that third brave new whole new world? No, no, I think it's Cogsworth. That is just the second one. Is there, is, there, is there a second one in his hand? Oh, I think there's two in hand now. Oh, I okay. I think, I could be wrong, I think he just top-decked another one. Uh... He's flicking his hand around. I might be mistaken. It, my, my mind might be playing tricks on no, me. No, it's just one copy. I, I think it's the Cogsworth that he drew, but he does very regularly shuffle his hand, so I, I can understand that. We're eyeing up a develop your brain. Is that headed for the Inkwell, or are we going to play it? 
I mean, it looks like we're going to have a Fortisphere first coming down onto the board, uh -huh. grabbing a card. Gives you an option for Flavisham in future turns as well. It is coming down. And we noticed that Matteo set up um, that second Diablo down onto the board. And, yep, yeah, as Justin had the first fire of the cannons, do you have another one? Can you interrupt this Diablo? We're going to ink a beautiful Enchanted Bell. Uh, we do, we don't believe we have a Babu, which is just as good, frankly, getting rid of that Diablo. So Justin here doing what these Steel Emerald decks tend to do, although obviously this is Steel Sapphire, but the Steel part of it, and just going, well, I've got Baboom, and I've got, I've got all of these cards which can get rid of your things which are going to cause me the most annoyance. Yeah, for sure, no, these Babooms and Fire the Cannons making their way into more decks that can play them, because obviously this Diablo is is and a threat that needs to be immediately answered. If you just let uh, Diablo sit there, it can run away with the game. If you're a newer there player, while go. Diablo is exerted, you draw every time your opponent draws. And yeah, as you say, there we go. We see the Ursula coming down, getting rid of that whole new world, and enough <laughs> Diablo. Mateo is determined one of these is yep. going to stick. Yep, yep, makes sense. And of course, as while he's playing them, that Bucky Screw Squeak Tutor on the board is forcing Justin to keep discarding cards. Yeah, that's kind of it. You know, even when the Diablo goes away without drawing any cards, it still costs Justin a card from their hand. Absolutely. We quest with Flavisham here and draw a couple of cards because we get to get rid of an item. Yeah, I think Justin's going to be thrilled to have had that Flavisham there because being losing both of his copies of A Whole New World and he's discarded two or three times at this point. So well needed. We're going to be paying five to play a Grab Your Swords. That's going to get rid of the Bucky and the Diablo <laughs> and two on each Ursula. Uh, maybe at some point those Diablo will just stop coming back. Is it three we've gone through so three far? Three have gone now. Okay, so Justin's done a super good job at keeping these at bay. We had a fire the cannons, we had a boom, and we had to grab your swords to take care of all three of those Diablo, and at some point it's got to stick that Diablo is just gone and is not coming back. Flavisham, however, Flavisham's sticking out quite nicely. Yeah, and that six willpower making him so tough for Matteo to get through with these Ursulas all with one or two strength for the Ursula Deceiver, respectively. It's not enough. Flavisham is big and bulky. Yes, there are a couple of cards like Brawl and Medusa that can deal with Flavisham fairly easily if you have access to Ruby. But outside of that, Flavisham's hard to remove even when he's exerted. Yeah, and that means you can just sit there getting rid of your items, drawing a bunch of cards. We've got some really strong one-cost items like Porpsicle and Fortisphere here, and you could go for Ice Block. That's fallen in our favor a little bit, Ice Block. Has. Yeah, yeah, you Honestly. don't see it as much as we used to early on in the format. Uh, a shout-out to Sailor, who very much popularized the Ice Block version of Ruby Sapphire. Sailor also doing very well in uh, Disney Orkana at Fort Worth, making the top cut. But yeah, definitely put that Ice Cube uh, on the map. It's still a good card, but a lot of players have moved away from it. They have indeed. So Mateo here, we've got two Ursula, but they are different Ursula. We've got five ink available. We're going to start off with a double quest for a couple of lore, and we're going to play an Aladdin, which is very nice against these decks, because when you quest, you get to banish an item. Mm. Justin kind of wants those items. Yeah, just a little bit. They are kind of helping him, uh, partly because of the Flavisham draw, but he's hoping over the course of the game to build up a nice item count, so that Tamar Tower has a nice high law count. It uh, starts off with one law, gets an additional one for each item on the board. So um, Justin not going to be happy about that Aladdin being there. No, that Aladdin is very... I mean, first it's a Floodborne, so it combos really nice to a Bucky, uh -huh. but it is great against decks that are relying on items. Decent stat line as well. It's not great at questing, yeah. but it does get rid of those items, which is a huge bonus as we see Beast Tragic Hero coming down here for Justin. Yeah, it came down on the previous turn. Justin drew two cards at the beginning of his turn, which is really nice because obviously he's been denied those copies of A Whole New World. But that actually may end up working in Justin's favor because obviously A Whole New World also feels your opponent's hand. So Justin may be quite happy that he's getting his cards off of Beasts and Flavishams. Yeah, I um, mean, yeah, if you get in those cards, doesn't really matter how you get them. Yeah. Draw one at the start of your turn with Beast, draw with Flavisham. What we'll probably end up seeing now with Aladdin on the board for as long as it's there, we're probably going to see one item at a time and just Flavisham. I was going to say getting rid of them by questing, but actually we're using a lot of characters here to take down those Ursula and just completely wreck Mateo's board. Yeah, he does need to slow him down a bit. Like you say, Mateo doesn't have a lot of high questing characters, but he is already at nine just from the last couple 
couple of turns of just a law here and a law there. So Justin can't let that just keep going on forever. And there was a really cheeky play at the end of Justin's turn. I said that the item probably wasn't going to stay there. Well, we actually saw the Porp School being used to heal Beast. So it was not on the board, and it left Beast with no damage on to draw cards. Love it. But unfortunately, Mateo did then go and use Baboom to ruin it. Yeah, no, it kind of uh, ruined that plan. But the Beast already got at least one additional draw off, and now it is sitting there as a body with seven strength, which is pretty big. Putting down that Fishbone Quill, probably because he knows he's taking out this Aladdin this turn, I would dare say. Yeah, Fishbone Quill. Or, or that. Well, you need to get rid of the Aladdin. The Fishbone Quill is yep. great for getting an extra ink every turn, but you don't want to just leave it there. But you can use it for Hero and Flavisham to draw cards. Yep, just put it down. I think he did one secret ink and then Flavisham questing to remove it and get some more draw. But yeah, I, I might be interested in taking out this Aladdin this turn. The Cogsworth on Justin's board is providing resist one to all of his other characters. So blanket resist is pretty good, really upsets the opponent's maths. Yeah, it's always fun. If you can get multiple Cogsworth out, it becomes very fun. Borpsicle does hit the board, get you an extra card when you play it. And, you know, Zootropolis, one of the other top Disney films. So seeing that in this deck with Tamatoa makes me happy as we see Aladdin leaving the board. Uh, I do believe that B should be on four damage. It was already on one, and it was Aladdin already has three. Uh, resist from Cogsworth. Ah, you're right. You, uh, I just, I literally just pointed that out, and then immediately forgot my own information. <laughs> yep, there you go. I'm That's glad, why there's two of us here. I'm glad you're here, Ross. <laughs> Bless you, mate. Uh, but yeah, that's also going to be interesting because uh, this Popsicle can only remove two damage yes. if it, because he could have potentially um, got his beast back up to full. But no, Justin recognizing he wants to get rid of this Aladdin, not just because it's sitting there questing, but it has three strength. It could take out the beast. Um, and, of course, it's going to hurt Justin's items as the game goes on. Yeah, it's very important. You know, that lad in it's in a lot of matchups, it's fine. But this is a matchup where it really does put in a much better shift. Now we see a lot of ink being used for... Tamatoa. Lovely, so that shiny. big shiny crab. Uh, or Brio, if you are in Spain, which we're not in Italy, but I, I've never seen the Italian shiny, so maybe mm. we'll ask our co-caster from Italy in a minute. Yeah, we'll make that happen for you today, Ross. I know you're passionate about it. But yeah, that Tamatoa that we mentioned earlier coming down, he um, allowed Justin to take that Porpsicle back from the discard, put it down, draw a card, and uh, down on Matteo's side of the board. All he can do is throw down a Diablo, which is... Are pretty good as far as your only card going but so far Justin has been able to remove all of these Diablos very quickly he's now got the lucky dime on the board that I was talking about not long ago which can give him huge jumps two items on board so this Tamato is questing for three that's going to take him up to nine here um, there is two ink left to be spent on that lucky dime which will take him up to 12 and then Cogsworth could quest to 14 Beast to 16 Flavisham to 17 this is getting tense yeah this is pretty much the point where you're just kind of like, this is not too much, which is going to, you know, you, if you've survived that turn, right? This is the whole point of Sapphire Steel. You need to survive for several turns in a row, six, seven, eight turns. We fire the cannons to get rid of that fourth and final Diablo. Yep, they're all gone. And, and then you get to this point in the game and you're behind, you're behind, you're behind, then you're up by seven. Like, but you turn around and you've gone from down four to up seven because that's what this deck does. And it looks like we're passing back over to Justin and that should be the game as we quest with everything. Use Lucky Dime and Justin Morales will go up one game to zero, but there's plenty of time left to try and salvage a point for Mateo. Yeah. Well, three, in fact. Yeah, yeah, plenty of time for them to be able to take a 1-1 one -one, uh, to end this. But yeah, congratulations to Justin taking that first game. Things are going pretty well for him, having the answers to these Diablo early in the form of Baboom and fire the cannons, things like that. And just, yeah, what didn't allow the Bucky player to really get their game plan going. They, they, they did manage that turn to shift Diablo, uh, Bucky and then shift Diablo. Wasn't enough. Justin had the answers. They did manage to get another Bucky and Diablo down. But Justin, again, was able to just take control of that game. A very decisive victory. They're going to just do a little count, make sure that they've uh, not lost any cards or anything like that and shuffle up as they go into game two. But... Yeah, super interesting game. That lucky dime, the, the strength being shown there by the jumps it can give you. But to be honest, by that point in the game, our other player was topping. They found a perfect gentleman off the top, and that was about it. 
Yeah, and I think Justin there really showed us how this matchup works. You've got to make sure you get rid of the Bucky and Diablo as soon as they hit the board, manage that Aladdin, and then wait for the end game. Have we mentioned yet that Justin, with this deck, got top four in Bockham? Yeah, it was, it was Bockham. I, I mentioned that he, I saw him okay. in a previous DLC, yeah, but it I, was, I couldn't remember if it was Bockham or Lil. It was top four in Bockham. Unfortunately, lost to Ruben Gutierrez's Amethyst Ruby in top four, but had a great run all the way through to a top four finish. So Justin already got the European Championships invite. Yep. Already got the serialized Mickey. You know what Justin doesn't have? What does he I have? imagine a binder with a complete foil set, including Ooh. all the legendaries and the nice, enchanted. Be nice, wouldn't it? That would be quite nice. I wouldn't mind. But we move into game two. This is round five. If you're just joining us for the Disney Lord kind of challenge in Bologna, this is round five of nine. Uh, I played on two game format and tomorrow the top 64 players will begin a two out of three top cut we're on our mulligan stage justin doing what me and joe were discussing earlier which is take advantage of the fact that if you are going second you can make your opponent mulligan before you do anything see how many cards that they are throwing back into the deck and that may um, manipulate how you want to do your own mulligan so worth pointing out there justin watch um, waiting for mateo to make a decision before they mulligan themselves yeah and i think we might be getting quite close to the point where we can call Justin the best Sapphire Steel player in the world. Ooh. We're not seeing Sapphire Steel winning Lorcana Challenges, these Lorcana Challenges. It, it's not happening. It hasn't won one in this format, but Justin has made a top four with one. Yep, you are absolutely right. You and the last one in Europe. Yep, no, you're absolutely right. If we talk about um, the Sapphire Steel deck, there's a lot of players that really love it, and there are great players out there, the likes of Harlan Sweet, DeCandio, Sky. There are more names that I could list, but a lot of players that really know this deck well. But yeah, Justin is definitely up there with some of the best pilots for this ink combination. We saw Mateo with that turn one hidden cove, and nothing else. Justin plays the Porpsicle, draws one, and passes back to Mateo, who's going to have... Doesn't have the Bucky, but the Ursa Deceiver is not bad going. Justin putting that Grab Your Sword to the side. Um, I don't know if that's because it's his only song or is because he's a suit. Yeah, I think it's his only, only song. song. Yeah. Uh, it is a Fall to Fear, not a Popsicle, but in this yeah, situation, fear. Yeah, sorry. it's a one-cost <laughs> item that draws you a card. It's the same It's a Popsicle thing. with grey stuff. Try the grey <laughs> stuff, Ross. It's delicious. Well, no, po no, if we're comparing the taste, <laughs> Popsicle is more delicious than Fall to Fear. I don't have think... you not tried the grey stuff? Ross. I don't It's think delicious. It. No, that, made, that is not a controversy. Lumiere has assured me the great stuff is delicious. <laughs> anyway, we do see that baboon from Justin, so got to be nice to have that in your hurly hand, knowing that as soon as this Diablo comes down, and believe me, it will, he will have the answer for it. He absolutely will. So we're doing it. Like Justin, I, I'm so impressed by his play style and his patience here, because watching your opponent go ahead game after game while you very slowly set up in to that end game state. It, I, I love the deck, cannot play the deck. Not for me, it is not my preferred play style at all. But oh, I do enjoy watching a good Steel Sapphire player doing their thing, having the answers to what their opponent puts down and then getting to that end game where you know, you're down by 10 law for like half the game and then you turn around and it's just impossible to lose. Yeah, yep. that, that, that is the power of the, I mean, the Sapphire Steel, like, lucky dime, but Sapphire Steel I think benefits from it so much and the yes. jumps it can make, you can be at zero law and just win the game in a matter of a turn or two. You really can. So we've got a double Ursula down from Mateo. We are back over to Justin playing that Mickey Mouse, which puts the top card of your deck face down in your ink well exerted. But we don't know what it is. No one's allowed to look at it, not even Justin. No. Nope. And Justin only had that grab your swords in his prior hand, but he has drawn once and played a develop your brain since then. So might have fished something else. Um, naturally, no. I see a Flavisham, a Lucky Dime, a Tinkerbell, a Rise of the Titans. Um, yeah, those are the cards in his hand. So he's going to be relying on that Flavisham to get his card draw going, which thankfully there are a couple of Fortispheres on the board. Not too bad. Diablo comes down into the inkwell here, and it looks like we are playing the other Diablo, the far more important Diablo. Soon as we get to next turn, you exert, and whenever your opponent draws a card, you draw two, which with Flavisham on the field means they draw two, you draw four. You are absolutely right, and Justin, I think, is going to want to take advantage of this turn. Do it, and yeah, there you go. I was never going to do last. this right now. A zero chance it doesn't get rid of this turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's holding 
holding the baboom. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, I think even if you weren't holding the baboom, you would definitely take advantage of this and go, okay, let me do my card draw now before you get it. But yeah, there is that. Uh, oh, it's a fire the cannons, which he found. So probably still holding that baboom unless it was inked. I'll try and have another little look at his hand. Um, Lucky Dime, Flavisham, Tinkerbell, right? Yeah, so we did ink the baboom and we played the fire the cannons. But yeah, that Diablo, he's incredibly devoted, Ross. He is pretty devoted, frankly. That, that is one devoted herald. Mm -hmm. So, if you're Mateo, you saw last game, you had a good start, but you couldn't keep your Diablo on the field. Um, oh, Diablo's actually moved, so you need to get rid of the location here because, of course, oh. you've got the extra willpower. Yeah, my mistake. I actually, yeah, my, I apologize for that, viewers. I missed that it was at the Hidden Cove, so He's only... Filling in the Hidden Cove. Hidden Cove seems like exactly where uh, some kind of mystical <laughs> raven would hang yeah, out. Yeah, you are right. To be fair, though, as I've mentioned, Justin is holding a Tinkerbell, and he's at five ink, so... That, I think that's kind of fine because um, the Diablo wasn't exerted yet. It will exert this turn and P Mateo will be able to draw one card when Justin draws, but then I'm pretty sure he will just come down with the Tinkerbell, finish it off, and then one damage on everything else. Maybe not. He may, might have a different line in mind because this is quite the board that Mateo is developing now, right? Yeah, it's actually building up quite nicely. It's what Mateo was never able to do back in game one. Justin was able to really control the board, stop Mateo ever getting more than the character or two out at a time. But here, Mateo is up five law to zero with a very nice-looking board. I was wrong. Oh, I was right. <laughs> here comes Tinkerbell. No, I, I think that Tinkerbell made way too much sense. Yeah, it's just he only had one in his hand previously, but that one must have been off the top. That's why I was like, oh, okay. But no, we are going to play that Tinkerbell, removes that Diablo, even though it's at the Cove, and one damage to everything else. And this Tinkerbell is just really nice for sort of checking board states with her puny pirate ability. If she banishes a character in a challenge, she does another two damage. So super Super strong card, and we're going to see a long came Zeus sung by Flavisham. He's got quite the singing voice, and remove that Ursa, the deceiver of all. Yeah, and this is what Justin did so well in game one, and doing it again here. Just going, right, oh, you've got your Diablo. Yeah, that's gone. Oh, that Ursa looking a bit annoying. That's gone. And making sure, you know, you can keep your other Ursula for a minute. You can keep your Jafar. I don't really care right now. Yeah. They're not that important. Right. But Diablo, Bucky, Ursula, deceiver of all, the cards which are going to really swing the match up for Mateo, yep. they're the ones where Justin's like, nah, mate. They gotta go. They absolutely gotta go. This Diablo is going to... No, sorry, the Ursula gonna reveal the hand. No, wait, what? Uh, is that not... Yeah, there's another Ursula came Yeah, down. Oh, it is another Ursula. Second Ursula came yeah, down yeah, looking gotcha, for a Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There you go. But there are no songs in the hand. Just a Rise of the Titans, a Lucky Dime, and a Flavisham. Oh, I wouldn't mind a Flavisham, but then again, we've already got a Flavisham. We don't necessarily need another. Only a six ink for Justin here. We're not quite as high as we would like to be. Yeah, we haven't seen that Fishbone Quill. I think the only ramp we actually saw was that Mickey Mouse Detective on turn three. Yep. And again, for the sake of newer players, um, if you think it, what's ramp mean, Baker? Well, we talk about ramp when we talk about accelerating, filling up your ink well. So you can ink once per turn, of course, in the game of Lorcana. But cards like One Jump Ahead, Fishbone Quill, Detective Mickey, these all allow us to put more cards in the inkwell so we just call that ramping just some uh, terminology there so justin not been able to benefit too much from that he's going to quest remove that fortis sphere to draw two more cards yeah very nice indeed that is what flavisham does it's one of the best draw engines in disney lorcana it's it's quite absurd how good that ends honestly, up being honestly i would say it is the best draw engine whoa in lorcana. i would i would go i would go that far if diablo wants a word mate <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think you're particularly wrong. You can make an argument for the rabbit, the Merlin rabbit. You can make an argument for Diablo. But there are certainly, you know, Flavisham. It is great. We see a bell hitting the inkwell here. And we see a Cogsworth hitting the board. Gives all your other characters resist. One. Important to note, if there are multiple Cogsworth, each Cogsworth will give plus one to everything. So three Cogsworth, everybody gets plus three, except the Cogsworth who each get plus two. Exactly. Exactly, yeah, because they don't give it to themselves, but they can get it from each other, which is very nice. Uh, Mateo's still with quite a wide board here, a couple of Ursa Dece 
receivers. Still got that hidden cove on the field. Um, the Jafar Dreadnought, and of course, previous turn, the Bucky came down. But again, Justin seems to have a healthy card count. He's got a Flavisham on board, a Porpsicle there, ready to be removed. We're going to see another Bucky coming Ooh, down. Now well, this changes things, because now you need something like a Tinkerbell going after everyone, rather than, and here we see Diablo as well. It might be time to grab your swords. Hey, if, if it's available, then I think that'd be a great play. But yeah. Are we moving into the cove? Yes, one of those Buckies and the Jafar are moving into the hidden cove just to give that extra level of protection. Tinkerbell will not get both Bucky, only one. Yep because this hidden cove giving an extra strength and willpower. But yeah, Mateo's board definitely looking a lot healthier now. I'm not sure if he's got a hand. I can't tell if he's placed it somewhere. I'm not seeing anything. Um, might just have it off to the side of the table. But Justin still with a few cards. It's not over yet. Um, and he's at that ink point in the game where he should be able to play most of his deck. Yeah, it should all work out quite nicely by this point. We see a lot of ink down there. We're going to use one of it for the Porpsicle. Draw yourself an extra card. Another one of it for a Fortisphere. Draw yourself an extra card. And there was a little cheeky little smile there to the camera. What did he top deck? Was that another Porpsicle? <laughs> Same thing three times in a row. And this is actually beautiful. Yeah, it is. Because you're building up your items. You've got that little you know, set of items for Flavisham to use over the next few turns. It means if a Tamatoa comes in, it becomes way more powerful. Mm -hmm. Isn't one in hand unfortunately but this is not too bad now we got fishbone quill going into the ink well and is that beast coming down we we just using five. Oh, it's another Cogsworth a second grandfather clock coming down so now all of the characters that aren't called Cogsworth have resist two and anything called Cogsworth has resist one getting it from each other also worth mentioning Um, something interesting. Justin's holding on to that Rise of the Titans, which can banish a location or an item. So it can be good for items if it's a Lucky Dime or a Quill, but really that Rise of the Titans is there for locations. The most predominant one being the Queen's Castle, which is one of the best cards in the game. Yep. And But that Hidden Cove could be a nice target for it. If you can get to a point where you've got one damage on the Bucky at the Hidden Cove, then just playing Rise of the Titans takes them both out because it don't, no longer has that extra willpower. So he's been holding on to that card for a few turns. I feel like that may be something that he's had in the, uh, Justin's had in the back of his mind. Certainly an option. We see Beast coming down, not from Justin, but from Mateo. Both players, of course, do play this Beast. It is a phenomenal card. So hard to argue with them all playing it, frankly. Yeah, especially in the Bucky deck, um, for sure, where it's a Floodborne as well. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, That's popular in Sapphire Steel, but yeah. we do see it in Justin's list. I believe it was in the list back in... <sighs> He uh, certainly enjoys it. Well. Am I right in thinking Justin played two copies of Scuttle in a 62-card list? Yes, that is correct. Bokken. Yep, that is absolutely So I want to know, and I know Joe wants to know this, are there still two Scuttle in there? Look at the board here, yeah. Baker. Look how many cards. And I'm not talking, both players have got so many cards down on the board. We don't, you know, the last game I did with Joe, we had the Amethyst Ruby Mirror. Here, with no cards on the board, here it's Lowe's, but ba-boom! <laughs> ba out the Diablo. Yeah, I think Ruby Amethyst is sort of like the 1v1 me bro deck, whereas this yes. is very much a, okay, I'm going to have my whole faction and then we'll have a huge, huge challenge. There is 10 Lords, just some characters on board from Justin here. Certainly more than Mateo has. I think Mateo's got um, uh, seven? Two, three, four, five, six, seven six, Lords. Six. Uh, what, uh, two oh, Buckies. seven, it is seven. Yeah, it's right. seven, yeah, yeah. Two Ursas, two Buckies, one Dreadnought, and one Jafar. But yeah, Justin, well, a lot of lore on his butt sword, uh, side of the board as well. This Gaston has three. The Cogsworth have two each. The Tinkerbell has two. So he could just, like, really catch Mateo off guard by just questing with everything. Here's a lucky dime. Pop the Gaston. That could get him there, or at least close. 
Yeah, we're not. We keep seeing Sapphire. We keep seeing these Sapphire decks this weekend on the stream, winning without Tamatoa, which I'm not so in favor of. But I think if Justin's winning here, he is not going to complain. And here's the point. We are getting quite close to the end game here. It looks like, and we've got six law for Mateo, seven law for Justin. Mateo wants a bit of a lead at this point and has not been able to build up too much of a lead as Justin is sitting there with a lot of good characters. There's Cogsworth to give extra protection to those characters. And Mateo's got a bunch of characters out, but they're not great at questing. This hidden cove has been on the board since turn one as well, just gone completely unchecked by Justin. But you don't really always have to pay any attention. It doesn't have any passive lore gain. Um, of course, it's really strong for like putting characters in there to give them extra strength and willpower. But at the moment, it doesn't seem to be changing too much about the game. So Justin, perfectly happy to let it just sit there. We've already seen Justin discard one Lucky Dime. He had to discard one earlier because of the Bucky. But of course, Lucky Dime is not the worst thing to be discarding at all when you are running Tamatoa. Yeah, Tamatoa tower on play and when questing will get you an item card back from your discard so that is going to help we Ooh. see strength of a raging fire come down and actually at this point that's a phenomenal card deals one damage for each character you've got in play well if you've got six seven characters in that play is the force of a great typhoon ross i mean goodness me that's absurd seven damage from strength of a raging fire you could compare it to a mysterious as the dark side of the moon but what an incredible move that was huge amount of damage on the Tinker Bell. Yeah, this, this is the benefit of having a nice wide board. Cards like Strength for a Raging Fire become a little bit overpowered at times. I'm worrying if actually, as much as I'm loving Justin's setup here, I'm worrying for, for Justin here, is Mateo's board getting out of hand? It's Are they just too much? Yes and no. It's starting to get there. I think if you ignore the Robin Hood and the Beast, there's not a lot, really a whole lot going on because they all but quest. He has a Robin Hood and a Beast. But yeah, but last turn he didn't have <laughs> quite as much as this but now that Robin Hood on top is definitely a lot of quest pressure and Justin seems to be have been quite content to play a slower game up to this point just building his resources he wants to reach that nice high ink point he probably wants to find that lucky dime to close out but he has the stats to be able to deal with Mateo's board when he needs to that Gaston is awfully big and the Cogsworth giving him resist one so we'll see how this goes but I actually think you're right um, Ross Mateo's board is looking pretty scary and you, you said about the, the, you know, the Robin Hood and the Beast that's where my mind changed when that second sure. robin hood came yeah, down sure. i went from there's a lot of characters but they're not great to oh yeah yeah this is kind of real now right <laughs> and you know okay they might quest for one each but when there's six of them out yep it adds up makes a bit of a difference so back over to justin here double cogsworth gaston here and flavisham not a bad board but i mean you really want to start getting rid of some of these i mean grab your swords would be phenomenal at this point for sure would take out at least one ursula both buckies but then one of the Ursas would be saved by the Hidden Cove. Yeah, that is true. Um, we've quested with Flavisham. We removed the Porpoiseagle to draw up. Justin going to do some maths here and work out how far Mateo is to gain. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he needs to start challenging this board a little bit, unless he thinks he can just win this race. He's holding two copies of Rise of the Titans. He is holding a lucky dime. He's Ross. not holding Rise of the Titans anymore. He's, uh, no, he's holding two. So he's yeah. not holding two anymore <laughs> because he's just gotten rid of one. And now Absolutely this is right. where we see things like Tinkerbell or Grab Your Swords potentially being game-altering cards, acting as a pseudo board wipe here. You know, a slightly weaker be prepared. Mm -hmm. but only for one side. We have, like, if anyone thought my Treble Cogsworth example earlier was unrealistic, boom, Treble Cogsworth on the board for Justin. Aren't you glad we did the maths yeah. earlier? Tick tock, tick tock. This board has got a lot of ward. There's a lot of resist going on. And yeah, Justin just making sure that he will actually win this race, working out. He's got game on board next turn. Yeah, but yeah. And with some to spare. Right now, he's actually got 10... He's got 10 lore on board, only needing four, five. And he's still holding a lucky dime as well. So he's asking a lot of Mateo here. Obviously, Mateo doesn't know that Justin's holding that dime. He's seen him discard one, but the, the, the standard number is two. I'm so very... expect it. Excuse me. Um, oh, you're fine, you're fine. I'm just going to say, Gaston's got resist free. Flavisham's got resist free. The other Cogsworth have got resist too. It is not going to be easy to take these characters out. And let's make no mistake about it. Justin has got game next turn. Yep. I mean, if you can keep 
any character other than Flavisham and one more which could be Flavisham, then with Lucky Dime, you will win next turn. Yep. You don't need any ink. You've already got the ink. If you can keep two characters on this board, you will win the game next turn because you quest for two, Lucky Dime for two, quest for one or two, boom, you have won the game. Mm. So Mateo needs to take Justin down to exactly one character in order to actually win this. Yep, he's holding a Tinkerbell. He's also holding a We Don't Talk About Bruno, which is super good, but can't target any of these Cogsworth because they have Ward. Yeah, I mean, you've got to get rid of it because Gaston on his own could actually win this game because yeah. you just quest and Lucky Dime and that's six. You only need five. So Justin is in just a phenomenal position here. Got top four of the Disney Lorcana Challenge in Bochum. Now having clearly a very strong run in Bologna as well. And yeah, this is... um. This is looking quite good for Justin here. Yeah, yeah, no, Justin's in a game-winning position. I'm not sure, like, Matteo can do a, he can make a move, but I don't think he can do enough here to prevent Justin from winning this game. This would have been a turn where, for a change, Matteo would have loved Beast to have had damage at the beginning of his turn, so it became seven strength. Yeah. That would have allowed it to take out the Cogs, were, sorry, the Gaston, even with the resist. And then maybe the, the combination of Robin Hoods and Jafar Dreadnought could have put a bit of a, a bit bit of a dent in Justin's board. He's going to play that we don't talk about Bruno. Bounce the Cogsworth back to Justin's hand. Again, Matteo doesn't know that Justin is holding the lucky dime, so he's got to play to his outs. Makes all the sense. He's only got two cards in his hand. They're going to roll a dice to decide which one is discarded. This is something that you can just do randomly, like if the player who needs to discard, um, randomly discard, shuffles their hand. An opposing player could just point at one, but the way I see this done most consistently is just number them all, roll a dice. Yeah, and the Gaston got put back to hand and then got discarded nice and easily here. Uh -huh. And look, Mateo's board is great, but Sapphire Steel has done what Sapphire Steel does. Yeah. Go up this board there it is. over the course of several turns. And yeah, that's game. That is game. Yeah. Justin wins two games to zero because when you get that kind of board,